Well, hello, and what are you looking at? You're looking at an empty board. So let's give you something to look at while I talk. We'll give you this Anatolian jigsaw puzzle, which I did do a couple years ago. All right, you can look at that while I talk. On my puzzle groups on Facebook, people have been asking about this board. This is a Bits and Pieces Deluxe Swivel Puzzle Easel. Notice the two words, swivel and easel. Now, I have an easel type contraption. I'm going to use that word for a moment in my office for my diamond painting because I have a drafting table and that raises about five or six, maybe even seven levels. So I have all the different angles that I can diamond paint on. Well, this is an easel in the sense that it also has angles, which are five, and I am going to show you those in a few moments. But there's something else, that swivel feature. And let's look at that swivel before we start raising it. Let's say you're working on a puzzle, and your puzzle is oriented this way. But you want to go ahead and work on the sky, and the sky would be up here somewhere, right? Well, you don't have to stand up and reach over or strain your back or your neck. You just swivel. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to show you something. This card table is slippery, so I got these non-skid pads. So let's put them down. And then I can swivel. I wanted to show you these non-skid pads in case you put your easel on a slippery surface. So you see how now the easel isn't moving? So now I can swivel it and the easel is staying in place with these non-skid pads. And I want to make sure you see them in the screenshot. They're right here. Can you see them? Okay, so let's put the camera back. I don't even know if the camera is straight because it's in the swivel mode. So when you start, this is the original position, right? But like I said, you want to puzzle the top of your puzzle. You want to do the sky on your puzzle. So what do you do? You swivel it 360 degrees. And if this were an active puzzle, voila, you're working on this angle. But let's say you want to work on these trees right here. You simply turn the easel this way, and there you have it. Or if you want to work on this side. Now, like I said, well, I don't know if I said this already, but I'm going to insert some screenshots because I thought it would be easier for me to show you this puzzle board with it being without an active puzzle. But if you look at my pictures that I'm going to show you, you'll see that I have puzzled in various uh, directions on the board. And I'll just insert a couple of screenshots. But that's flat, okay? That's flat. So this is the original position, right? Now, I'm going to shut the camera off and move the phone so that I can show you how it looks underneath with the angles. Okay, give me a few moments. Okay, I am not a professional. I am not a puzzle channel, but I want to show you this table. So I'm converted over to my selfie stick to help minimize the shaking that the camera might do. Now, I am facing the orientation that I would be facing if I was sitting in my office chair, correct? This is how I would be facing in my original landscape position, which is most of the puzzles we do are landscapes. Quite naturally, there are portrait puzzles, there are panoramic puzzles, there are round puzzles, there are shape puzzles. But for the most part, we do portrait puzzles, uh, portrait in the portrait position. So this is the way that it would look, correct? But now, okay, I had a little difficulty trying to sort out the angle, but I want to show you something. If I were actually working on a jigsaw puzzle right now, and for the heck of it, we'll put this here, and let's say I'm working on this puzzle, I would be working in this orientation that you see my hands. But for this part of this video, I have this set so I can show you all the angles. This is the first angle of the drafting tape, or uh, the puzzle easel, is flat, okay? Now, if my head goes in the way, I apologize. If I lift it, I better find it. The first position is flat, okay? The second position is right there, okay? Can you see that? 
Yes, you can. I just checked through my watch. Then you have your third position right there. You have your fourth position right there. And you have your fifth position right here. So now I'm going to pick up the selfie stick and move it over here to show you. I will throw in a couple of screenshots at this 45 degree angle, if I'm not mistaken. If I were angling, if I were puzzling at this angle, my pieces stay 100% intact. So I'm going to insert this part, put this in the spot in the video that I'm making now with some screenshots. So these are various pictures I took during different stages of working on a couple of different puzzles. And as you can see, it doesn't matter which position I have the easel in, the pieces stay intact, whether they're part of the puzzle itself or loose pieces that will be placed later. Any angle, and they stay perfectly fine. So what do you see here? You see here a cover. Let me get this piece out of the way. There we go. You see this cover with 12 areas that you can secure, 12 little clips. There's three on this side, three on that side, and two on either side. So that's three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 clips. Okay, so you have, no, there's 12, there's three on each side. So there are 12 clips and to easily lift it, if I open that clip, I can just lift it like that. And there's even a finger hole, for, make it easier for me to grab with my thumb. But the nice thing about this is that the material, the felt material that's on the board that you puzzle on is also the same felt material that's on the cover. So if I needed to transport this, say, to my kitchen to work on my big dining table, which is in my kitchen, or I wanted to work on my drafting table, if we go over to this side, what do you see? You see a handle, okay? Now, the board itself weighs, I believe, I believe 20 pounds exactly. So with a puzzle, let's just say 21 pounds altogether. 20, 21 pounds. You can carry it luggage style, suitcase style, briefcase style, from one location to the next without any of your puzzle pieces shifting. So I simply take this board off. I take, I simply take that board off, throw it on my bed, under my bed, not on my bed. I throw it under my bed and I puzzle to my heart's content. Now, the other thing that I said I wanted to mention in this video is most people that have cats or small children will cover the puzzle easel every time they're done with a puzzling session. However, can I do this with one hand? I don't think, I don't know if I can. Because I leave off of puzzling at an angle, my cats can't jump up here. Because the pieces do not fall off, I just leave it open. And I've had this for nine days now, and I've done six jigsaw puzzles on it in nine days. And I am not only doing jigsaw puzzles on it, but I'm also pretty much doing it the non-sorting way. So I've done 750 piece puzzles and 1000 piece puzzles, but this board goes up to 1500 pieces. Now I wanna show you something else so the cam's gotta go off while I set that up. So this is the last clip, but I wanted to show you something that I've done. Now, the last thing I mentioned before I shut the camera off is this, I've done 750 piece puzzles and 1000 piece puzzles. But this board will accommodate puzzles. Let's turn it the right side up. Will accommodate puzzles up to 1,500 pieces. Okay? But the thing is, with a smaller puzzle, like a 500 or a 750, you can pretty much center your puzzle and put all your, or put your puzzle to one side or the other and put all your puzzle pieces on the board. With your thousand piece puzzles, you can do maybe a third of those extra pieces. So what do you do with a limited puzzle area? Because I'm working with a three foot square card table, so I don't have any other puzzling area. Now I do have a small table to my right, but I did something else. On this shelf, which is immediately to my left when I puzzle, I took these puzzles and I just doubled them up on other shelves. And I opened the shelf up, 
okay? So if I'm using trays and I want to stack my trays, all I have to do is set them on that open puzzle shelf. That's all I have to do. Right there on that open puzzle shelf. I'm puzzling right here and my puzzle, extra puzzle pieces are right there. By the way, my puzzle that I just finished was missing a piece and I just found it on the shelf, but that's neither here nor there. So I created a place for the puzzle pieces that are put being put to the side while I am working on my easel. Another way you can do it is like an empty puzzle box. Like I have one here. I can put my puzzle pieces in this puzzle uh, empty box and I can also put it right there. And that allows me to, if I were say to work on this, I'm gonna try to come away from the light. I've got too much glare, I'm sorry about that. I can't come away from the light. Let's try something. Sorry, I just try to adjust the light a little bit, but let's say that I go to work on this 1500 piece or another one and it takes the whole board. No worries, because I've created a little cubby right to my left where I can store my extra puzzle pieces when I am not using them. And those are all the facets of this puzzle board that I can think of. And I thought it would be worthwhile to make this video because this discussion has been coming up all week. Maybe it's been coming up before then, but I wasn't interested, so therefore I didn't pay attention to it. But now that I have this board in the puzzle, discussion of the easel has come up I thought I would make the video and last thing like I said if you're using a slippery surface like this card table invest in some six dollar non-skid pads because look at that my easel is not moving if I removed these skid pads not these non-skid pads and I go to raise my eagle or swivel it this thing would go flying sorry hit the camera would go flying right off the table that was an extra six bucks, well worth it. But your surface, you may not need it. Um, there's one other thing I thought I wanted to say. There are other tables you can buy. You can buy a, say, four by six table. And this would go on your table. And then you would have another foot or foot and a half, say, on your left or your right for your extra puzzle pieces. But I'm working with my closet right there. You can see some coats hanging. My television right there. My windows in front of me. So this card table is as good as it's going to get unless I go into my office. But I like puzzling in here because, look, this is where all my puzzles are. So that's everything I can think of. The lighting isn't great. The clips might be a little messy, but I think you get the gist. This bits and pieces, and there's the name right there. Deluxe Swivel Puzzle, swivel puzzle Easel. I'm not going to say it right. $109 on the website. Currently at Amazon, it's up to $129, but just keep your eyes peeled if you don't want to get it from bits and pieces. But, oh, I know. One other thing, I'm sorry, I keep saying one other thing. There are so many puzzling options out there. Like Zacco is a company that makes beautiful, beautiful, beautiful puzzle boards. There's other companies, Bits and Pieces for that matter, makes different puzzle boards. There's lots and lots of options. But I like this because it swivels and it's an easel. So it swivels and it's an easel. And then of course, this is felt so your pieces don't slide and yes one more thing i sound like colombo don't i i heard that after some use this uh felt is going to start peeling so just in case it does i purchased oh you can't even see that let's bring the light back over sorry if it's going to glare on the puzzle pieces I purchased this lens shaver. I haven't even opened it yet. And the reason I got this lens shaver is maybe after some use, if I run into pilling, I can easily take care of that. 
So that is what some consider to be a downside to this type of material that you puzzle on. So I think that's everything. I can't think of anything else, but if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as efficiently as I can based on the personal experience that I have. Alrighty, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.